Hello and welcome to this training video introducing Little League's new four umpire system for the 60 foot diamond released this spring um, in March of 2021. In this video we'll outline the general principles and philosophies of this new system um, and specifically here we'll take a look at the general philosophies, principles, and then ultimately really focus on the pre-pitch starting positions of U1, U2, and U3 in different situations. Let's go ahead and get started here. Let's first take a look at the general principles and philosophies that ground this system. And then secondly, we'll spend the majority of the time taking a look then at the pre-pitch starting positions of U1, U2, and U3. I'll go ahead and share my screen with you, pull up our presentation, and that way we can go ahead and take a look uh, at all the information that is necessary to take a look at those guiding philosophies, and then ultimately the different types of things that we'll see play out. Uh, with regards to our pre-pitch starting position. Now this system was released to us in the late spring of 2021. It is a new addition to uh, the four umpire system uh, that we'll be using on the 60 foot diamond. And this is what many uh, tournaments are supposed to be using here as we head into the 2021 tournament season. Now let's take a look here at some of the general principles and responsibilities here. Uh, again, this system then is kind of based upon the following philosophies that ground the system. Number one, we wanna try and front load umpires. So we're gonna try and use as many umpires ahead of plays as possible. Uh, when utilizing our rotations, and we'll talk about that here uh, as we go on through this series of training videos. We're going to assign responsibilities and rotations to cover plays with the highest order of priority, so we're going to prioritize those. And then lastly, uh, here with regards to this version, to, to make sure that we see when we're assigned multiple base coverages, it's important to let the ball take you to the play. So chest to ball is going to be a very important fundamental for us to practice when we are in rotation and assign multiple base coverages. Not to overcompensate, as you see here, uh, so that we don't necessarily compensate for one base where we may have a play at another base due to multiple base coverage responsibilities. Uh, so that's kind of the groundwork, I guess you could say, of the general philosophies and principles of this new system released to us here uh, in the spring of 2021. Now, in addition to those three things, the other thing that we want to make sure that we do, and this is going to be really important for us as we talk about initial starting position here in this video, is to prioritize freedom of movement for the fielders, basically that we're not in their way, uh, as well as the runners, so we don't hinder any play or any result of their of our positioning or rotations. Uh, so when we're assigned a single base coverage, we'll use things like point of base and the wedge to make sure that we stay out of those, specifically taking us into foul territory to observe playing action and things of that nature. Uh, so specifically, as we start to introduce some of the concepts here that are going to ground us, uh, it is important to note that the priority of freedom of movement, especially in our conversation in this video today, is really important with regards to initial starting position. Lastly, we'll talk about umpire communication throughout the series of this video, uh, definitely to make sure everyone's on the same page and working as a team to execute these fundamentals and our principles here within uh, our new four umpire system. Now, the majority of this video is going to be spent on our pre-pitch starting position. I think there are a couple important things for us to go ahead and realize here about our pre-pitch starting position. Number one, they should afford freedom of movement uh, for the fielder. But secondly, they should allow us to get where we need to be on time. Okay, so to get where we need to be on time while affording freedom of movement. And that means here that we are going to be in position for steal plays, back picks, and the ability to rotate here as well. Now that pre-pitch starting position is not only going to set us up there, but we'll also talk about our post-pitch steps today as well. Uh, so pre-pitch starting position and the intensity and efficiency of post-pitch steps, really, really important here when we're talking about both pre-pitch, in-pitch, and then post-pitch starting position so that we can go ahead and execute the fundamentals of this system. Now let's take a look here at our pre-pitch starting position. We'll first start with U1, who just loaded up into the screen on the animation. U1's position, as you see here, is always going to be in the A position. We're going to want that individual to be um, a, to be in foul territory completely with both feet, approximately 10 to 12 feet behind the, uh, the, the first baseman here when they are playing, when that first baseman is playing in normal uh, position, okay, in normal position. As you see, if this fielder adjusts his or her position, we are going to adjust as well. If they move forward, we can move forward, never 10 to 12 feet, which is really only about three to four steps from the base. If they move deeper, then we still want to be about one step behind. But again, we don't necessarily want to be so deep where we have that 10 to 12 feet now. If the first baseman is playing, let's say, behind the base and like towards the, the dirt, we don't want to be super deep 10 to 12 feet off of the first baseman in that instance, because then that could uh, really affect our ability to rotate or cover our base in a back pick or something like that. So 10 to 12 feet at normal depth here, as you see here, never closer than 10 to 12 feet to the base. Again, that's approximately three to four steps. And again, that's all relative to the position of the first baseman. If they move up, 
we're going to move up. If they move back, we're still going to move back. But at the same time, we're not going to be as deep off the position of the first baseman. And again, that is the initial starting position for U1. Now, U2 is given a little bit more freedom than U1 is actually given. And as you see here, we're not going to use the same positioning as we would in a two umpire system. Uh, so we're going to use basically that tangent line, uh, and you are going to have the choice of either the B position or the C position, whichever is your preference, whichever is your realm of comfortability. Now, today through this video, as we talk about initial starting positions, and as we talk through a variety of these videos, it's important to kind of think about things here as to where exactly you feel is best for you. Is it the B position or is it more of the C position here as U2? Uh, so that is then going to be completely up to you here. Uh, and again, we want to make sure that we're not super narrow or in the batter's line of vision, but we also don't want to be super wide because then that would affect our ability to, number one, get to second base, and then secondly, rotate accordingly. We also don't want to be super deep. Uh, a lot of times we'll talk about being on the dirt so we don't have to overcome the lip. Um, so we want to be either one step off the dirt or at least on the dirt here, a shoulder square to the release point of the pitcher to the plate here. And as you see, both B and C, kind of up to you as you two to determine situationally which one you would rather use. Now, again, B or C is determined by situation and preference. And again, our goal here, as we talk about things here today and in a lot of the other different videos here for us, uh, are to consider a variety of different factors, present those to you, and then allow you to choose which is more comfortable for you, the B in certain situations or the C position in others. Move on to U3. Uh, U3's position, as they come here in the animation, very similar to uh, the, the, the first base um, umpire's positioning. Again, 10 to 12 feet off the fielder, about three to five, I'm sorry, about three to four steps off the uh, third baseman here, uh, playing at normal depth. Again, if the third baseman moves back, we don't necessarily need to move back because, again, that's going to affect our ability to rotate or cover our base, but we still need to be at least one step behind. And we made that point as U1 as well. We want to be, even if they, the first or third baseman is playing deep, we want to be at least one step behind. That way we're affording that freedom of movement that we mentioned earlier here in the video so far. If uh, the fielder is going to move up, if the third baseman will move up, so will we, but never three to four steps or 10 to 12 feet uh, from third base. Okay, So we can make sure that we adjust our position, again, number one, to ensure freedom of movement for the fielder on the corners and even in the middle as you two. And then again, we want to make sure that our pre-pitch starting position ensures that we can cover our base on time and that secondly, we can rotate on time as well. And that's why our depth is so important here. Now, I've got a little bit of a video clip here, a variety of different video clips to kind of show some initial starting positions and to present us with some ideas to think about and consider uh, here when we're considering our initial pre-pitch starting positions. So our first clip here with regards to these starting positions takes a look at a situation here uh, with no runners on base. And if you take a look here, we've got great demonstration here of the fundamentals. Uh, we've got probably normal depth by both the first baseman and the third baseman playing here. And our wing umpires, U1 and U3, are not any more than three to four steps off of those individuals. This allows them then to cover their base on time and get to rotations on time. Take a look at U2. Again, remember, we want to use that tangent line from the apex of the plate through the mound and not necessarily in the direct line of vision uh, of the batter. Here we're on that tangent line here. This umpire has chosen the B position or the backside position uh, to go ahead and use. Again, he's not very deep into the outfield either, only about a step or two uh, off that infield dirt, and that's going to allow them then to recover to second base or to rotate accordingly. So our depth is excellent here at each of the three positions because it provides freedom of movement for the fielders, allows us to cover our base on time, and then lastly, it also allows us to rotate accordingly when needed. This ball is going to be put in play. You see it's a shot right back up the box. Uh, and again, good controlled movement, efficient movement, chest the ball here by U2. He's able to get to where he needs to be just in case there was a play that was going to come up. Another good example here of pre-pitch starting positions, uh, this infield is a little bit bigger, a little bit uh, deeper, if you will, the, the dirt at least it is uh, at this regional tournament than uh, the Little League World Series. You can see our positioning here by our umpires very similar as well, 10 to 12 feet. Uh, in this case, you've got the fielders, first baseman and third baseman playing almost even with the base, which allows us to shorten up our position. Again, never 10 or 12 feet closer, three to four steps closer than the base. 
which then allows us to, number one, provide freedom of movement for those fielders, secondly, get to our base as we need to, and then third, rotate on time as well. Uh, here we have a runner occupying second base. Our umpire has elected the uh, this, the, the uh, B position here for that one. We'll talk about that a little bit later here in the video as well. But nonetheless, here a really good demonstration, again, in both of these clips of good pre-pitch starting position because they afford freedom of movement for each fielder involved. They allow us to get to where we need to be to cover our base on time. And if we have to rotate, we can get there accordingly here. So shortening up and abiding by those uh, ideas of seven to, of 10 to 12 feet, three to four steps uh, is a really good rule of thumb. Here we have a ball put back in play. Again, umpire exhibits a lot of the same fundamentals that we see. Opens up to it, chests the ball, clears the throw here. And then again, we want to make sure here that, that our positioning allows us to get back into where we need to be in case we have a position back into the base. This is point of bag at first base, which we'll talk about throughout the videos as well. Now, again, our pre-pitch starting position is so important because it allows us to realistically do those, the, those things that we've mentioned already so far. But it also allows us to get to wedge positioning more efficiently and then rotate more efficiently. So as you see, the depth of our pre-pitch starting position, the intensity of our post-pitch steps, and our ability to read and anticipate the play in the time allotted are very, very important. Now, one thing that many of you guys will learn is that as we start to go through the upper levels of tournaments, especially on the 60-foot diamond, stuff happens super, super fast. So that 10 to 12 feet distance off the fielders is a really good rule of thumb. Uh, and making sure that we're not too deep is another really good rule of thumb. That way we can get to where we need to be on time, because I will tell you that the game is played a lot faster as we get to the state and the uh, regional and ultimately World Series levels. So again, executing the wedge, rotating and getting to position all dependent upon one, the depth of our pre-pitch starting position. So we want to shorten that up. Secondly, the intensity and efficiency of our post-pitch steps, which we'll mention here a little bit later today as well. And then lastly, the ability to read uh, the play in the time that we have provided. Now, finding the wedge here, okay, and ultimately, uh, you know, subsequent plays, again, dependent upon our pre-pitch starting position, which is the theme. So remember, we don't want to be super deep. Now, the umpire here in this clip is a little bit deeper than we would typically probably like. And as a result here, our angle is a little bit more challenging. You can see here that the angle on this steel play by U2 puts the fielder in position or in between the umpire and the runner. So our, the depth of our pre-pitch starting position uh, can affect how well we actually see our play. Again here, this umpire in this clip is positioned straight up the middle. And if you remember, we want to avoid this when U2 is. Uh, but again, this umpire has to take four or five steps to get in position. Again, the depth of our starting position then is going to determine how well we can see and position for plays. And obviously, the deeper we start, the more ground we will have to cover. So we want to make sure that we shorten that up. Again, 10 to 12 feet or three to four steps uh, is ultimately what we've been looking at on the corners. And then we can even shorten up or narrow that up a little bit here uh, in the uh, middle in, in as you two in either the B or C position. Now, again, we want to make sure that our post pitch steps are efficient. And if we start closer, that allows us then to take fewer steps, which gives us greater viewing angle into the play, especially when using the wedge. So again, if you take a look at this play, we've got to take a variety of ginger steps here. Uh, and ultimately, again, we have an obstructed view. We have the runner in this case in between the umpire and the tag attempt. So again, our pre-pitch starting position and then the intensity and efficiency of our post-pitch steps, very important to make sure that we are getting the best look possible. And that's all then predicated on an initial starting position or a pre-pitch starting position that number one, provides freedom of movement for fielders. Secondly, position shorter, so not so deep, so we can get to where we want to be. And then lastly, when the ball is put in play, as we've seen in previous clips, allows us to get to where we need to be either at our base or in rotation, or in this case here, subsequent action with regards to steel plays. Now, again, this umpire is probably a little bit too deep here. If you take a look at this steel play at third base, he's got to take about six or seven steps to get in position. Now, I do think that his uh, steps are efficient. But at the same time, he does have an obstructed view. The runner, once again, is between him and the tag attempt. So we don't necessarily get all the way to the wedge. If we can shorten up maybe by a step or two and still maintain that relationship of three to four feet off the fielder, in this case, it was the third baseman in our pre-pitch starting position, maybe that gets us a better look at this steal play. So just a few things to consider here as we take a look at our pre-pitch starting position. Shorten up and then continue to use those efficient, purposeful steps so that we can get the best look possible on any situation and we can get in the best position possible here as well. 
Again, post pitch steps really important here. Uh, we got to make sure that we try and get the runner sliding back at us in the wedge. This umpire here again kind of gingerly steps around here, uh, and we we have an okay look at this play. But again, you can kind of see that the depth of this umpire's starting position, and then ultimately the lack of intense, purposeful steps or efficient steps don't necessarily give us the great look uh, as great a look as possible. So it's important to note just how important our pre-pitch starting position is. Number one, as we mentioned, to afford freedom of movement. But secondly, to give us the best look possible either at place back into our base, steel plays, wedge plays, or uh, as we'll talk about, rotating on time as well. Now, as we kind of mentioned here, things happen super, super fast. So when we want to assume our, uh, our starting position, we want to make sure here that we definitely shorten up and that we are efficient in our post-step movement. So again, the combination of those two concepts, a shorter uh, starting position, no closer than 10 to 12 feet from the base, which is three to four steps. And we also have talked about it relative to the fielder. But not only do we want to combine that pre-pitch starting position, we also need to make sure that we are taking post-pitch steps towards the base so that we are then going to be there on time, particularly for back picks. Now, remember, these things happen super fast. So let's take a look at a couple clips here, particularly as you won at first base. Here we've got a pitch, runner at first base, snap throw back to the base, and boom, it's going to be a really, really close play. Now, our umpire here has done a really good job of those two things. Number one, taking a pre-pitch starting position that isn't too deep. And then secondly, he's done a great job of taking his post-pitch steps. And that's why he's able to get a pretty good look here at this call. Okay, if we take a look at his pre-pitch starting position here, he's probably parallel with the fielder, probably needs to be about another step or two back. But as you can see here, he starts to move with the fielder, which is really, really important because that is what gives him then the best look at this wedge look here on this play back into first base. A good look here across the diamond at this. Again, we want to try and see our umpire's head and eyes in between the tag and the runner. Uh, and as you can see here, that is going to be incumbent or dependent upon pre-pitch starting position. And then secondly, the intensity and, uh, and focus of our post-pitch steps, the efficiency of our post-pitch steps to get our head and eyes right down through here. We should probably see him about a step down a little bit more here. Nonetheless, a pretty good position. I do think he gets as far as this play allows him to get. Another look here uh, at the importance of um, a good starting position and post-pitch steps as you won with a back pick into first base. Here again is a back pick. And again, same umpire. This time he gets a little bit low side on this one. But again, a very quickly developing play. Again, take a look at his pre-pitch starting position. Probably could be exactly where he needs to be. I think he's in a good place, maybe a step back. Uh, but nonetheless here, we've got post-pitch steps, which set him up to go ahead and get into the wedge. Remember, the wedge then that we want is his head and eyes in between the runner and the fielder. He's probably too low in this one. In this case, should probably be a little bit higher in this one. Again, goal is head and eyes in between the runner and the fielder with an unobstructed view. And then getting there is dependent upon the three things we talked about. Number one, your initial starting position. Secondly, your post-pitch steps. And then third, your ability to read and then get into the wedge. Really close play, really, really quick developing play. Another back pick at U1 here. Another quick one coming in. And right here, a great look here by U1. Does a great job of those post-pitch steps uh, and allows to see him down through the tack. Probably could be about a step off the line here. Probably toes on the grass line is where we would want to be in this case. I do think this umpire may be a little bit too close to this play. But nonetheless here, his head is in between the runner and the fielder. Probably just needs to be about another step uh, or a step and a half back. Toes on the dirt uh, or toes, toes on the grass line would probably be an ideal position here for this umpire. Now, again, all of those are really important here. Pre-pitch starting position, post-pitch steps, and your ability then to read and get into position. We'll go across the diamond here to third base because the same principles will go ahead and apply. Again, things happen really, really fast. Let's first start with some steel plays at third base. Here on this steel play, as the runner goes, we've got to do the same things. So from our initial starting position, that's got to allow us to get to a spot where we can go ahead and wedge up and get our head and eyes in between the runner and the fielder. And this umpire does a great job of those things. So initial starting position can't be too deep. Secondly, his post-pitch steps have to be purposeful, efficient, and aggressive. And then lastly, he's got to read the play to get into the wedge. And he's able to do that here on this steel play. Another great example here of a steel play, 
Initial starting position can't be too deep because it's got to allow us time to get to where we need to be. Secondly, post pitch steps are important. And then lastly here, uh, we got a read to get into the wedge. Here we have a delayed steal. Getting back to the base here, umpire does a good job here of those post pitch steps. They're efficient and intense and aggressive. They're able to get his head and eyes in between the fielder and the runner. Right there we see it. And we've got a good position then for this steal play. Same is true for back picks and in steal plays. They're all going to happen very quickly. So initial starting position, post pitch steps, and then your reads. Very important here to try and keep your head and eyes in between the runner and the fielder to get you the best look possible. Now, again, for these back picks and these steal plays, closer starting position here, never more than three to four steps from the base. But again, we're going to judge that off the fielder. And then we want to take intense, efficient, and aggressive post pitch steps. That way we can make the right, we, right reads and use the wedge. Here we have a back pick at third base. Again, happens super fast. And again, our umpire is able to react in the time it takes us to see this throw come back all the way down. Again, great look here because the umpire has assumed a shorter starting position, great post pitch steps, and here he read the play, head and eyes are between them, the runner and the fielder, toes are about on the grass line, which is exactly where we want to be. A great look here by this umpire, great job here of initial starting position at pre-pitch, making adjustments here with our aggressive post pitch steps, and then reading the play to find the wedge. Here's another good look here at an initial starting position, which allows us to do all those things. This umpire here has done a really good job of being three to four steps off the third baseman at normal depth. And this is going to allow him then to read the play and then get in position for back picks here at the base. And then again, you can see him working the wedge. He's got his head and eyes in between the runner and the fielder as we have this back pick back into the base or this play back into the base. Uh, and again, a little bit more timing in this one. But again, our ability to get to where we need to be, whether it's a back pick or in rotation, is dependent upon our initial starting position, our pre-pitch starting position, our efficiency of our post-pitch steps, and then our ability to read in the time that we have uh, within the play. Now, YouTube is a little bit different. Now, we know that we've kind of got some, some general guidelines and things like that with U1 and U3, and they make more sense here. But with U2, you've got some liberty to make decisions based upon uh, what you feel is in your best interest as U2 or U, uh, as U2 to position. Now, remember, you can use either the B or C position. And what I want to do here now is kind of present some ideas to you uh, so that you can determine whether or not the B or the C position is more effective or more appropriate for you in certain situations. Now, again, our keys are going to remain the same. We still have to provide for afford, uh, we still have to afford freedom of movement uh, for our fielders, and the depth of our pre-pitch starting position has got to allow us to get into position, whether in rotation or to our base. So we've still got to make sure that we apply those same fundamentals that we've already talked about here as U1 and U3. Let's take a look at this at U2. Now, again, with no runners on, we want to make sure that we assume a starting position that is on that tangent line. Either B or C is up to you. And again, you got to make sure that you get to the base that you need to cover, either in rotation or to get to point of base. OK, so we can use either B or C in the outfield grass about a step or two out there, but not too deep to impact your impact, your ability to cover second base uh, or then to go ahead and rotate accordingly. Here, this umpire does a great job of that one. Good, controlled, efficient movement, chest the ball. And he's going to be in a great spot then uh, for things at second base. Now, again, that was with no runners on. So that, that's kind of something uh, to think about there. Now, the other thing here to also think about in terms of determining B or C, uh, sometimes people want to go towards the pull side or the back side of the hitter. Uh, that's fine, especially when there's no runners on. But when there's runners on, as we see depicted in this still shot, a couple things to consider here. Um, and what I'm going to offer is a little bit of an intuitive um, piece to some, 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 some things that have been taught previously. Now, we can't necessarily apply the fundamentals of the two umpire system or the three umpire system to this four umpire system because it is the four umpire system. And we've got some liberty to go ahead and change our angles. So if we take a look at the fundamental principles of wedge theory and we want to use wedge theory as much as possible, one of the major tenets of that is to get the runner sliding at you. Well, here with R ones only, and that's exactly what we have as a runner at first base only. If we're going to have a steal play coming into second base and our goal in the wedge is to have the runner sliding at us, wouldn't it make more sense to be in the C position uh, so that we can just step right on into the wedge? 
Additionally, if you won leaves, that allows us then to drift into the infield, remain chest to ball, and the same would be true if you three leaves. So the seat position for R1 only, or even with R1 and R3 only, where we may have a steal play at second base, that gets the runner sliding at us, gets his R1 sliding at us, so we can walk into the steal play and essentially then put together uh, some good wedge clips here or some good wedge uh, fundamentals as well. It additionally allows us to J-hook in, keep chest the ball both in right field and into left field. Uh, so a couple things then to think about here with regards to using the C position with R1 only rather than the B position. Now let's take a look at a couple different clips here. Here we have an umpire that has elected to use the C position with R1 only, and we have a steal attempt. Again, note the starting positions of our umpires. The infield is in. We've got good starting position by our wing umpires. Freedom of movement is there as well. And then U2 is shortened up with R1 only so that he can get to the base. Now, again, the theory here is that we want the runner sliding at us, which is why this umpire uses C, and that's going to allow him to walk into this wedge. So as we see this play unfold, he is able to literally step into the wedge, put his head and eyes in between the runner and the fielder, and then go ahead and see this tag attempt. From the C position, it requires very little effort for us to go ahead and walk into. Now let's compare that here with the B position. That's not to say you can't get the wedge to the B, but this will require you then to go across the diamond here, so to speak, or across the back end of the base in order to get the best look possible, the wedge, with the runner sliding at you. Same situation with R1 only here, but note that U2 has, talk, has taken a, a, a starting position that's a little bit more shallow so that he can get to second base, and his steps, we can already see him stepping with the pitch, which is great, so that he can get into position. However, he's going to use B rather than using C, as we saw in the previous clip. So in this instance here, we get the runner stealing, and now you can see his movements force him to go towards the back end of the base, which is exactly where our C position umpire would have walked right into. Now he gets back there and technically kind of gets that same look, could probably be at least another step down. And had he started in C, maybe he gets that step down uh, so his head and eyes are a little bit more between the runner and the fielder. But as you can see here from the B position, he's kind of got to go across to find the wedge, whereas in the C position, he walks right into it if you juxtapose the two clips. We've got some replay angles here for us to see. You can see he's kind of in the way of that overslide. And again, maybe he needs to take a step down uh, even more from the B position. But, you know, realistically from the C position, he's probably there and with more time to go ahead and adjust. Again, he's had to come back across the bag, and he probably should be at least one more step down to continue to rotate here into this wedge. So he's not necessarily in the overslide uh, of this runner. Probably can be about a step back again. But again, the C position allows you to walk into this position, whereas the B position requires you to come across. Again, a couple things here to think about uh, with regards to choosing B or the C position. Another look here at the same concept, this umpire is going to come from um, the B position. He's got to come across, fight for some, some ground here with the shortstop. And again, he's going to be in a position where he probably could be at least one more step down. And had he been started in the C position, again, then that may have got him probably at least another better look here. So he's not necessarily in the overslide. Nonetheless, choosing between B or C, completely up to you. So if you're somebody like this umpire who is comfortable finding the wedge from B, then absolutely go ahead and use the, the, use the B position. But if you're somebody that would rather use C to walk into it, you're welcome to go ahead and do that as well. But just a couple things here to think about in both of those situations. Remember, the goal of the wedge is to get the runner sliding at you. So does that difference, uh, does that make, does that, does that principle uh, make you choose differently between B or the C position? Now, the same would be true here for back picks at second base. So the concept of choosing B or C that we've gone through so far has all been relative to the fact that we have a steel play coming into second base. Let's talk about back picks here now. Now, back picks are going to have still, we're going to want the runner coming back at us. Runner sliding at us is one of the major fundamental goals of wedge positioning. So let's say here that, that second base is occupied. So in the previous clips, we've seen an R1 situation only, and we can also apply that to R1 and R3 with the runner coming into second base. Now let's take a look at R2 situations. So this is R2 only, base is loaded, second and third, uh, whatever you may want to want to put together. Again, you have the liberty of choosing B 
or C. But as we go ahead and talk about choosing between B or C, remember here that we want to get the best look possible, and Wedge has the runner sliding at us. So just as I theorize that potentially you may be better off in C with R1 only or R1, R3, you may be better off to find the Wedge in the B position when second base is occupied. Again, we want to execute the same fundamentals that we started with in our pre-pitch starting position. Number one, afford freedom of movement. Secondly, start closer. That way we can get to where we need to be if intense, with intensity, aggression, and efficiency. Uh, and that way we have the best look possible. So let's take a look here at back picks into second base and try and figure out if B or C uh, is probably a better place for you. Now, again, I've got a still shot here to go ahead and start. Here we have second base occupied. This is a R2, R3 situation here. Uh, good positioning and depth here by our wing umpires as well. And then again, U2 has position then essentially uh, in, the, in a very narrow uh, B position. Again, this is to go ahead and have the runner sliding back at you. So that's the philosophy or the thought process there. And that would then limit your movements and allow you to be more efficient in your movements to find the wedge on any back pick. Um, so where we talked about the C position, uh, anytime you have R1 or R1 and R3, anytime second base is occupied, potentially consider using the B position rather than traditional taught, what has been traditionally taught, which has been the C position. Again, the B position here with R2 occupied gets that runner sliding back at you. If you have a play back into second base, it allows you to walk into that back pick. And then again, if you three leaves, you've got chest to ball and have both those runners in front of you. You've got multiple runners in front of you as you move uh, to second and third um, in what would be uh, our fill rotation. Um, or if you one leaves and you've got a fill, then you can just pivot back in here too and you've got both chest to ball and both runners in front of you as well. So let's think here about the B position here over the C position potentially with second base occupied. Take a look here at this clip that we're going to go ahead and take a look at. Here we have an R2 only situation and we have a back pick back into second base. Again, things happen very quickly. So starting in, in the B position here allows our umpire to walk right into the wedge. Now, yes, he's still got to fight for some position here with the second baseman, and we're going to be there to fight there for, for, for quite a bit. We just have to have conversations and talk uh, with our fielders. Uh, but nonetheless, our goal is to get as quick as possible to our point to get head and eyes in between the tag and the runner. We don't want the runner to be between us. We don't want the fielder to between, be between us and the tag attempt. And again, what's important to note here is that our pre-pitch starting position in selecting B allows us to walk into this angle, whereas if we were in C, we would have to kind of come around to the back side. If we stayed in C, if we stayed in C over here, the runner would be between us and the tag attempt, potentially allowing us to get straight lined. So the B position here allows us to get our head and eyes in between the fielder and the runner to find our wedge to avoid being straight lined here in this individual play. Now, again, you can see our umpire, he'll talk a little bit to the second baseman. you say, hey, let me make sure I get my spot. Um, and, and again, we probably should shorten up a little bit here. Freedom of movement is a priority of those fielders that we want to go ahead and afford. And that's why this umpire should go ahead and continue to talk to uh, the second baseman and just go ahead and go from there. Now, I do want to go back to that clip here. Uh, so let me get back here set to that one just so that we can see that runner. Um, coming back in. Here's the, that clip again. Again, from the B position, this back pick, this allows this umpire to walk in. Remember, if we are in the C position, we're straight lined on this tag attempt. Okay. And again, shorten up, uh, efficient usage of post pitch steps, allow you to get to the wedge uh, and keep your head and eyes in between the runner and the fielder. Now, a lot of things there to go ahead and think about relative to your pre pitch starting position, particularly as you two in either choosing B or C. And again, with no runners on or R3 only situations, you're going to be positioned a little bit further in the outfield as you too. Uh, and that's going to give you some freedom of movement as well to, to go ahead and track and chase fly balls, which we'll talk about a little bit later, uh, rotate if you need to, and then obviously cover second base. But remember, three major fundamentals and three major ideas here in your pre-pitch starting position. Number one, they should afford freedom of movement for the fielders. Secondly, here, we want to make sure that that starting position allows us to get us where we need to be. And then we want to make sure our post pitch steps and our reads allow us then to uh, take advantage of the time that we have allotted to get in position. That'll do it for this episode here of going through our new four umpire system on the 60 foot diamond. We'll be back with more training videos here and breaking down the four umpire system later on.